Okay, okay, here we are. Um, I'm a little bit late today. And um, I'm so sorry about that. I really want to start trying to get on a good schedule and do this every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. I did not make this work for this past Thursday. Um, I'm going to post something to Instagram really fast to see if anyone is my friend enough to watch. I don't know. Um, here we go. Let's see here. It would be nice if they didn't offer the swipe ups for exclusively for those who are cool enough to have them because I'm definitely not cool enough to have that stuff. Um, but it's fine. We will live. Okay, so what I want to start doing and we'll see how far I get before any of this accidentally upsets someone because I have a hunch that it might, but I want to talk about color editing and I am not a professional colorist, but what I think is really interesting is that people make money selling presets and I've had this conversation with a lot of friends of mine who are super, super new to photography or just like don't feel confident in their coloring about how whenever they buy a preset pack, you know, they look at whatever the artist used as their before and after and then they go to put it on their photos and they're like, what happened? This doesn't look like their stuff at all. And I've always found that really interesting and I've wanted to start exploring it largely just because I... I really don't see how any universe exists where we should be selling people things that they can't use or that they don't feel like they can use. I don't know. So here we go. We're going to dig into um, a pack that I found because I was weirdly targeted through a sponsored ad to get this and um, I have no idea who this person is. Um, but this is their work, right? So we got a lot of stuff like this, some, you know, some studio moments here. Sorry, my dog is barking. There you go. Relax. One moment. Stop it. Um, one second. Hold on. All right, sorry about that. So um, my dog just, for no reason, wanted to kill someone. And I swear if he tries to get back in here, I'm gonna feel really bad. And then this is another aspect, but I wanna back up on this. This is another aspect of this artist's work, um, which I think is different than the stuff that I just pulled up. You know, the, you know, it's the studio stuff that's under this editorial category. Um, I hate to say it, that's not editorial, it's like studio portraiture. Um, and there's this kind of like environmental stuff going on here. Um, they have a preset shop. So here we are. We're going to check all of these out. And I didn't really pull a lot of stuff. Um, oh my goodness, I'm really sorry. Hold on. Sorry about that, just dealing with the dog. Um, so 
we're gonna check all these out I pulled some images I didn't pull a crazy amount of photos by any means but um I pulled like some street stuff from when I was in Hong Kong and the reason I pulled this stuff is because I've got some kind of like really you know there's no depth of field flat bright like you know it looks like these are some photos that you know you could even take on an iPhone right I'm not gonna lie I don't think I took this on that nice of a camera um, and then on the opposite of the spectrum I have some like more low-key street photos similar situation like they don't have any depth of field um, and they're definitely more on the underexposed side but there's the option to bring out color or bring out light right like I can take this here and just like this alone you know I could play around with being silly with the white balance um, you know blah say blah right and like that in its own just like completely changes that image but I'm gonna reset this so we're gonna start oh and on top of that I have some studio photos I took that are beauty photos I brought these through because um, the artists whose presets we're gonna go through, um, I think their name is Kai, um, but I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, so I'm gonna just not, you know, mess that up. Um, has some beauty portraits in there. Um, the way that I lit these is different, so bear with me there. And then I have some other beauty portraits or more like port like just regular portraits I guess these don't really fall under like beauty portrait spectrum but um natural light portraiture um that I took <coughs> for uh Alexander Wang <coughs> oh my goodness one second I'm so sorry Sorry about that. Something is upsetting my dog and I don't really know what it is. Um, so we have all this stuff. I'm going to go through it. Rocky start, but here we go. Um, so, whoa, holy moly. Let's get into the world of flat. I'm going to actually put these and give these a the crops that they would have. Um, I shot these with like a little bit of headroom here on principle of the fact that I knew for this particular project that they were gonna have to get cropped to a four by five. So if I didn't pad that, I would have been super screwed. Um, and these I gave a little bit of padding to as well for the same reason. I also think I'm probably gonna white balance these before I put, I don't think I pulled the color card over for this one. Woo! I'm gonna have to just like kind of spitball where I think that might live maybe. I love that I don't even fully remember like how I colored this set. Um, actually though, Something like this, we'll pretend. Okay, cool, cool. So we're gonna start with these. Um, oh, and I should also probably crop these. Eh, uh, you know, I don't know. These I kind of just shot with the intention to live however they you know, wanted to. Um, well, you know what, I'll crop them four by five. We'll let everything live in kind of the same family. Oops, all right, I was supposed to pick an arrow there and I picked a zero. Okay. So 
So, do 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 do. I feel really bad. I don't think anyone's actually gonna get to see this first one unless I plug in the right keywords because it's really late at night. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm letting down my five friends who will watch this. Um, to start anyway. I don't know what the future holds, but for now, that's where we're at. Okay, so here we go. And then I think I'm gonna put a little bit of exposure into these. Not anything too crazy though. Um, okay. And the reason I have these is exclusively because this entire building, this is um, from when I was in Singapore. And it's the windows are like rainbow colors. So I just wanted to be able to show the warm tones and then like kind of cool tones. Anywho, um, okay, so we're going to start with this first one here. Oh shoot, I don't have my sink on. There we go. And I, this is just me, I don't really like super flat photography and I also want to make a quick call out that I don't think that their photography I mean it's kind of flat uh, which is fine um, I don't but it's not that flat I guess this is kind of in that space but it's still not this flat and I do want to preface this with the fact that this image was not underexposed or overexposed like you can even see it in my histogram so like whoa first thing that I think is interesting about this preset is right off the bat we're pushing the exposure up why are we doing that for somebody else's photo that doesn't make any sense sorry you just lost points there alone so that'd be the first reason why applying this preset the specific one to any of my photos is gonna look insane it's because baked into this look, <laughs> we're pushing the exposure a stop. Like, holy moly! Why would I do that? I didn't, you know, I didn't meter a stop under. I don't think most people do. Um, so if you're gonna sell preset packs, y'all, don't do this to people who don't understand coloring because they're gonna be annoyed. They're gonna be like, why does my photo look like I'm whitewashing people? Now on top of that, I guess with some of my photos, I mean this one was kind of under, yeah. I could probably pump a little bit in there at my own discretion. But like, woo! Alright, we're gonna go back to their work here, like outdoor stuff. Because again, I don't think their outdoors imagery is overexposed like this. And it's not. Um, so like, this is the most you know, paralleled photo I found. And yeah, the colors are there. I'll give them that. They can win that they can win that battle. They brought the colors here. You gave you gave me the colors. But there's the exposure. So I think the first takeaway tip from this particular one, and I'm in the nineties, so oh I'm gonna backpedal here. I should have done a better introduction of this. They have all these packs and I'm starting with this nineties preset pack. Um, and that's what I'm going to go through. I have Noir, Spectre, and Utopia. I think I also have this one. Uh-oh. Hold on. I think I forgot to put that one in here. Do I even have it on my computer, though? Whoops. Everybody just saw my MySpace photo that I saved. Okay, let me see if I can find it. Do I even have this? I do. And I forgot to install it. Because that's who I am, I guess, apparently. Whoopsie. Alright, I'm gonna bring it over here. So I'm gonna go through them all. And hopefully we can 
figure this out together. One second. I'm gonna drag this over here. Really quick, just so they don't mess this up totally. Okay. Did I get it? Did I get it? Why do I feel like I didn't get it actually? Okay. Here we go. I'm just gonna call this Renaissance like that for now. Okay, bam. We're not there yet. So that's the takeaway I have here. I will give them this because this image is underexposed. This specific photo, yes, it definitely needs a plus one. But like, does this need a plus one? No, no, she doesn't. So outside of that, I don't hate it if you're into like the pastel -y, like girly, I should call this girly, but if you're like into the pastel -y vibes, we're, we're in that, we're in that space. And this one's actually pretty fun. Okay, so I wouldn't use this for that kind of stuff, I don't think. I also should just have left this as shot, maybe. Yeah, I should. Hold on. Let me reset this. I don't- oops, sorry for the cars outside. Mm. Mm. Not cute. Okay. Alright, so I don't hate it as much if I hadn't played around with my white balance like a fool. But I don't think I would definitely not use those um, on like a tungsten studio beauty shot. Um, and if you're into this kind of like reds and blues look, okay, you could probably be happy with this here. I feel like this is kind of a little too pinky for me. So we're gonna go in this next one. Um, again, here we are with the exposure up. So I'm just gonna knock that down. Um, I wonder what's going on in here. Like, is it in the curves where we're getting this? Yeah, so a lot of work in the curves. Anything happening in here? Yeah, we're counterbalancing an HSL. Anything that happens here? Oh, that's interesting. So what happens if I turn that off? Huh. Okay. So we have some hardcore luminosity curves happening here. And that's kind of what's in like a little bit of color curve, but then like the main color is actually coming from this grading panel, which I think is interesting. Um, always curious to see how people do this stuff and then like break it down. Um, and then we're like color balancing together. I wish that people who sold preset packs even walked through their process. Like we're gonna kind of try to break some of this down together, but you know, nonetheless, I'm just gonna stop. I like this if you're into like for these kinds of photos right here. I'm actually gonna take this exposure up a little bit. But I think that this is fun for these street photos, I'm not gonna lie. Especially if you wanna have that kind of nostalgic look to it. Like that's winning for me here, as far as a preset pack goes. I think that these faded shadows in here, um, even though I don't necessarily apply that stuff into my work a lot, um, I think that this is fun. And um, I think it's working for this. Ooh, what did I do? All right, so we're gonna go to the next one. Let me actually check out what this looks like with color. So I actually took this exposure down. Oh, and I should probably pull their stuff back up. Let's see. It's just gonna confuse me as to why that that's called editorial. Um, I'm really sorry. Mm -mm -mm. Can we look at their Instagram? I haven't looked at this. This is interesting. Now I wonder what this would... Oh, idea. Yeah, so I think that if you're doing natural light portraiture, this 90s pack, it's... And you take the exposure down, unless you're shooting super under. Whoops, I just lost that on my own. It's, it's bringing in here 
want um, what this artist does, I think. We've got flat shadows. Or like the, what is it? The blacks are lifted, right? Yeah, shadows lifted. Highlights down. Lots of pumped in grain happening. You can see it in there. I, you know, I think texture's fun in imagery. Um, fun, fun. Hmm. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Or else we're gonna be here all day. I did 91, we're going on to 92, right? Bam. Again, don't understand why we're pushing the exposure up. That makes me feel like whatever image that they shot when they worked on these was, it must have been a stop under. Um, Cause their work isn't, oh wait, I didn't even notice this. They have a page for their presets. I wonder if we're ever gonna run anything like this as we go through these, okay. So, maybe a little bit here. I wish I actually could have like compared this one to the one before it. Okay, cool. This one kind of circles back to this first moment here. I actually don't totally mind the exposure being pushed up for these, but I think that I would only do a half. I don't think that I would go in and do um, almost a full stop up. What does this look like? It's made this stuff really red. You know, when I'm leaving my white balance that shot now. Um, I weirdly kind of feel like we're in a similar space to what we were earlier. We are, we just have like a little bit more contrast going on now, but otherwise the coloring is actually really similar. So I think that basically what you're getting out of this is like, hmm, there's a little bit more reds in the highlights here in that in 1990. Okay, let's go on to 94, right? Cause I'm at 93, I should be paying attention to this. Can I see my history really quick? Whoops. Oh, come back. Well, I'd have to click the photo, wouldn't I? 91, 92, okay, so I haven't done 93. I also feel like I probably pulled too many images to go over these with, and maybe I shouldn't have done that. All right, so we're gonna go to 93, bada bing. All right, we're up a third in exposure. I don't think that I need that for at least some of these photos in the beginning. A super flat moment again. I need to stop clicking off of that on accident. Um, I'm gonna look through their work and see if I can find anything that even looks kind of this flat. Maybe this one. I shouldn't actually start pulling their imagery with, well, this isn't their imagery. I think this is someone else who has these presets. Um, this color kind of seems to be harmonious. There, they definitely must have tw like tweaked around um, and played around with these settings for sure. Um, Cause the shadow is just gone. And did I mess this crop up? That feels like something I would do on accident. I don't know what happened there. We're, you know, we're very much in the same space again of like highlights down, white point down, like we're, we're there, we're in it for that. That's definitely this artist's thing, I guess. Um, all right, hold on. We're going to go on to 93 now. Let's see if I can pay attention. No. 94. But well, that's interesting, 93 to 94, 93 to 94. So 94 is just gonna be a little bit cooler. It looks like, oh, no, I shouldn't just say that. It is cooler overall. You know, we've got, we're flattening out that shadow again in the tone curve, I bet, yeah, like, doo doop. That luminosity curve is just up here. 
Um, we don't have as much of a, a bump in exposure again. Let's zero that out for fun. Super flat. I want to go back to their website here because I don't remember their studio stuff looking like this. If I'm being honest with my memory, but I could be wrong. I keep wanting to call them Cat, and their name is not Cat. I think it's Kai. Yeah, their studio stuff is not flat like this. So I think the first takeaway is this is not the studio pack. Well, I guess this is not studio down here at all. But like this is not the pack for studio stuff. I think that as I finish this one, I'm just gonna stop flying it because look. Um, all right. I'm at 94, right? Yeah. So we're gonna go to 95 now. I'm gonna stick to doing this on the natural light portraits and the out stuff outdoors. You know, now we're in kind of like, oh, this is an interesting choice on there now. So now I've taken the highlights down, they brought the white point all the way to 45. Um, What does this look like here? Bumped the exposure up a lot. I'm gonna guess that this person, when they shoot digital, they shoot under and then compensate for that in post, which I think is totally fine if you're shooting digital, actually. That's just my opinion. Um, we have so much dynamic range. We don't have as crazy of a tone curve. I mean, I guess a lot of what's happening is happening here in grading again. Um, I like this with the city picks. <laughs> um, yeah, right? Like, this is kind of fun. So I like this with the city stuff. If you're into this kind of look, I should say. Um, whoa! This makes her skin look wild. Why does it keep doing this? Um... I must be synchronizing something with my crop with her. I don't know what it is. So I definitely would take the white point down and stuff of her. I don't, I feel like I would just use this for street photography so far. Woohoo! Okay. We're back to just like put the exposure up a bajillion, aren't we? Or we're not. So where did we get this where is this happening the tone curve I am so confused what am I missing why do I think I'm missing something right now I'm totally missing something we're gonna turn it all off I feel like this artist's approach to coloring is like flatten it out, then pump the color back in, um, which is theoretically how you should color, but um, it's good to know, because um, I don't imagine that as I go through this series that everyone's going to be doing that, um, and I could also be totally wrong. All right, so we're at 96. I... I don't love this one. Sorry. It's fine. Um, I just feel like it's super washed out and like we've lost everything here. Okay. 97. We are green. So I think that this again is fun for street stuff. You know, like we're creating this, like this moment here. I need to stop saying like all the time. Creating this, you know, vintage feeling moment. Um, I'm gonna look at their cinematics set again and see if they have anything like this, and they don't. So maybe this, right, has the green. So let me go back into here, but like it's just so green. 
and we're up a half stop exposure so like if I were to even take this down but you know it can't be this because the shadows are flat are so flat so if we wanted to bring this into looking like this we would need to probably get rid of their tone curve oh come back I meant to click this right yeah so they are cheating you on this one if you want this well and I also would just want this entire section of color to be taken down a whole notch but you would need to bring that back to get it to live in the space here and you probably need to um, take this down you know okay anyway moving on where was I? Oops, I don't need to go there. 97, so let's go into 98. I'm not gonna lie, I would not, if I bought this, I would be upset because this does not look like, like this baked in, just like, copy paste and go which is at the end of the day what presets are for does not look like their work I don't think because like this this photo these photos in general without this preset on here they're very the tone the tonality is, it lives in a very normal space right what the heck is that keeps happening with this I should know better but I don't and when I put this on here it's like suddenly we're blue people So, I think my only application for the 90s collection would be, like, if you're into doing environmental portraiture and you wanted to have this, like, faded moment feeling, this is where you go, is with this. Bang. Okay. So, this one is a no for me. Bye. Um, I think that we'll do the black and white one. Next. Can I just take this all the way back? Well, it's whatever. I don't, I don't, I'm going to mess everything up. Anyway, so... I just take up I'm so sorry. I'm embarrassed. Um... Thank you, Life Water, for sending me this water. That I was not paid to say that. They just sent me this water. I am very thankful for it. Um, okay, we're gonna go. Yeah, we'll just go in order. So here we are. Bang. Black and white one. I um am actually into this, right? Just like right off the bat. Oopsie. And I say that because well, I wouldn't use this, and I would probably take it down. I'm a little bit concerned about what's happening with the texture of this image. This does, though, just immediately kind of give this... I'm going to draw a blank right now about what style of photography this references or what artist this is referring to. Um, I'm going to go to their website and find the black and whites and... We can chat about it. Where the heck do they just go? So their stuff's definitely not... Yeah, they're black and white. So this one maybe. Right? We're definitely doing something to bring out the dynamic range in skin here. Let's see where we're doing that at. Oh, here, here we are. All the magic's happening here. 
So yeah, they're taking the skin tone down, which totally makes sense. You can see it in her face too. To kind of give it, oh, it's gonna drive me nuts that I cannot re remember what artist this is like kind of referring to. And I would say that this stuff is kind of living in that space. I don't know why we're still pumping exposure into photos for people. I, again, I'm not gonna lie, I love these for the street stuff. Like, this is super fun. Um, what else do they have going on here? Let's take this back to people for a minute. So, for the black and white here, they took the blues up. Oh yeah, they just like really were really like, let's to make it black and white and bring out all of the skin texture. I have no idea why the yellow is making her eyes go up. That's super strange. Um, and I know the red's gonna impact the skin too. Okay, so we're just kind of taking that angle and then I think we're doing something interesting with the texture and clarity here to give that just kind of that pop. All right. So this is the one and this is technically two. I don't know if you can see that in the corner. Um, again, we still have that exposure going up. I would take that down. Yeah. This is honestly kind of making me miss. I haven't posted or edited anything in black and white in a long time. Uh, so it's kind of making me miss that a little bit. This gives me pretty hardcore like film noir vibes, which is actually really funny because the preset pack is called noir. Mm -hmm. Look what we've done there. Okay, how are we on this stuff? Yeah, so it's definitely, it's definitely living up to the name of the pack. So that's cute. Okay, moving on. Let's go to this. Whoa, what have we done to her skin here? Does this get balanced out by bringing this down. So that's a really interesting thing that I'm just because I've never done this. Like, hold on, I need to reapply this. I think that's this one. So the first thing I noticed right off the bat is I thought to myself, why is this preset suddenly bringing out crazy texture that is not as recognizable even in the raw? But it's there. And it's because I need to have those yellow tones and the black and white kind of like live in a similar space to the oranges or else it's going to happen. Um, so that is a fun thing to observe because otherwise like, whoa. Um, and it brings out just like the way this shifts the color across the entire photo, not just even in the jaw there is really strange. Okay. Um, and I say that because it's, um, oh my god, what's the word that I'm looking for? Oh, it's just shifting the tones it's completely different than what they were in the raw. That's really all I have to say about that. Um, there's the word I was looking for and now it's gone. And you could see, whoa. You could see it in the raw in the upper right hand corner there too. Like it's this is shifting these tones to be insane in this image. Um It's also making this highlight on her cheek so crazy. Okay, I kinda wanna just move on from this one before I get more freaked out. I don't hate it for street stuff. This is kind of fun for street. I feel like I'm gonna like a lot of their presets for street stuff. Um, this is three, right? Okay, hold on. Yeah, 
Yeah. So from three. Is there even a difference? Why am I? There is a difference. I'm just losing my mind. Okay, so from three to four. Or were we already on four? I need to keep better track of what I'm doing. Um... No, we were not on four yet. Okay. Whoop. Here we go. I also keep leaning into my desk. I'm really sorry about that. Um, okay. So from three, which is much flatter, to four, we're kind of back into, you know, the shadows are still lifted in the tone curve. We can see that there. Um, but this actually feels more like the raw, but with like a little pizzazz for black and white because we you know flattened it out a little bit sorry about the vehicles um let's see i don't hope that i don't get the hiccups yeah right like this is actually kind of just like letting this actual image live as is and you know, we're like you know flattening out that shadow i wonder if and just because I'm tired on slate, I'm now wondering if I'm saying that wrong. But you know what I mean. Okay. Let's see how it lives here. I like this a lot. Oh, no. Don't do that. Um, with the street stuff. I'm getting kind of... Oh. Bored already because a lot of these, for some reason, just feel the same. So I think that what I'm going to do is actually rattle through them like this right now. Bam. Bam. Woo! Okay. So lots of flat. Lots of flat. Lots of probably exposure going up. Um, what's funny is how this actually kind of gives this image a really interesting look here that I would not have loved on the image prior. Um, I do really, I will say that I really enjoy that, and I could be totally wrong making this up, it could just be my screen, but I feel like they've added like a little bit of warmth into this. Did they do that? Can they do that? I mostly edit and capture one, so I have no idea if you can do that in Lightroom anymore. Because I know that you couldn't before. I might be making that up, actually. I don't remember, and I'm tired. I'm sorry, everyone. So this is what these look like here. That's the one where we're bringing out all that texture. That one to that one. Let's kind of like hop back and forth. Oh, dang it. I might as well just select this. This would make it easier. And, you know, two flat moments, but we're shifting the shadow point. Let's take it into here. That contrast gets wild. Woo! Okay, I have to do this with this one too. <laughs> That's definitely this tone curve. Yeah, it is. And then where, or is that coming in from this? Yeah. So if you wanna go in for this in a way that doesn't feel or if you want, I shouldn't say anything if, um, like that. Hold on one second. If you want to go for a look like this, or if you want to use this preset and you want to scale it back, let's talk about moving this up just a tad. Okay. So the black and white set, I definitely like more than the 90s set. I'll give it that. Um, all right, here we go. I'm going to go into the renaissance pack. I'm going to do just like a quick pass through on all of them first. 
right off the bat, this Renaissance pack feels so much more like this guy, girl, hold on, their stuff. I actually don't know anything about this artist. Um, but I say that because, bam, let's talk about this and then let's go to this little tab on their website here. Um, like if you want stuff that lives more in this space, right off the bat, this Renaissance pack, it feels like it's more in that moment. I would take the exposure down. Let's go through. Lots of blues and greens getting pumped in these photos. In hindsight, I kind of wish they would have kept this 90s pack on here, but I'm not gonna re-edit. I hate this. I'm sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. It was just, that was a lot for me. Um, I wonder what this one looks good on. So we're gonna take a look. This one just threw me because you can see it. I'm gonna apply this to all these photos. There's this green happening in here in all the shadow points. So let's see what this is best, like your best case use for this. <laughs> like, oh no. Yeah, something outdoors for sure. But I actually just, this is definitely the worst preset I've seen that they're selling you so far. Like, no. This one's terrible. But this pack is definitely better than the 90s pack. All right, we're gonna apply this one to everything. This also makes me kind of wonder if this artist sold to you the things that they use to a degree because there's just way more depth in their imagery. Their imagery is not this flat, you know? Like, maybe these at the bottom but the rest of it is not this flat. Okay, back to it. So we're gonna go through all these on the street photos. And these are fun, the street photos. Like this is really, this is, I see a lot of people kind of shifting into coloring things in this space, so. If you're, you know, a natural life photographer, street photographer, this could be a shortcut for you. You could also probably remix your own stuff out of this, but okay, we're gonna move on. Because otherwise I'm gonna take forever. Oh, I need to scroll through this one on studio stuff too. One sec. So we have this, which this, like this first preset in general just really felt to me Hold on, I don't think it's going. <coughs> Sorry, I had something in my throat. Um, this just really felt to me like there were kind of, oh, I'm in the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. This one, this is what I was talking about. Did I just rattle through this on the wrong thing? That's really annoying. Sorry, I'd messed that up. So this is this. Mm -mm. Oh no, I didn't, I did do this on the right thing. Sorry, sorry. I just didn't do it correctly here. So this one feels like their stuff. And I say that because, you know, they've got, they've pushed up the exposure here. I'm gonna take this down for myself. But I'm gonna find a studio photo of theirs. And like, well, I don't think I have a color card on hand. You see what I mean? Like this, this is close-ish. What I think would probably need to happen would just be like taking this down even more, honestly. Yeah. So 
to just play with it a little bit. I think the big thing with their stuff is that the color is actually pretty spot on in their presets to their work. I don't know why they have an exposure shift in these in these looks for everyone because everybody's exposure is gonna be different. Some people are like to shoot over, some people like to shoot under. Um, and I think that it would have been better to have not had that happen automatically with these. Okay, so we're gonna move on. Oh no, I'm silly. We're not gonna move on yet. I did not go through all these. So this, this. Well, that's fun and that's fun right I don't know I say it's fun because at least with this stuff whoop, I almost spoke too soon I was going to say that things seem like they're living in more of a normal except we get to get through there I have no idea what that last one's for um, but anyways because it's living in kind of a normal color space for skin tones and then I spoke too soon all right we're gonna get rid of these that one's probably, that one and the black and white ones are my favorites so far. Um, let's go back to this. Lots of blue. Every time I say something, then I get to the next preset and it just contradicts whatever I'm thinking, which is kind of hilarious. But for the most part, lots of blue tones living throughout this outside of this one and I think this one um this definitely feels like a preset world like when I look at these I just feel like I'm looking at a preset a photo with a preset on it it's probably better for me to word that I'm gonna rattle through these in here whoa I think it's really interesting that in this I'm gonna use this are we doing something in the detail here? No. Huh. I only say that because when we go from this one to this one. Wait, was I even? Oh yeah, from this to this one, you can see the shift in the detail. See? I'm not going to poke around and figure out what that is, but that's really interesting that we went from something so soft to something that's like very crisp and at you. And I can see that the texture is up, but anyway. I'm sorry, I'm tired, but I'm committed. I'm here. We're doing it. I feel like this has some resemblance to some stuff I've seen by them on their site, but I could also just be totally making that up. Um, I'm definitely just making this up, I think. <laughs> There's nothing on here that looks like this. Okay. Let's rattle through these on, you know, a city moment. Again, I like this. I like these for street a lot. Like this color is fun. And it makes me want to actually see what they're doing with the color here. I mean, they are in every single the one common denominator that I'm noticing so far in the, all of their presets is that they're, you know, lifting the shadows up not only in the general exposure slider but also in the tonal curve. Um I think that this shift from changing the blues to like this teal is really kind of fun. Um, especially if you're somebody who's into the red, blue, or orange, blue, teal, red, teal, orange color scheme. Um, hold on. Yeah, like this is fun. I like this. It's also actually not too far off from how I captured this image either. It's just like adding to the moment. I think I need to do more street photography in general. Just really gets me going. Because I shoot, I normally photograph people. And so this particular trip as like a side tangent was fun for me because it got me thinking about all of the really kind of simplistic ways that I was looking at things. And it also got me looking at things 
outside of that space, which I think was really nice. Um, but yeah, I like this for the street stuff. I think that the boosted exposure, if you shoot under, do they not do it on this one? That's actually hilarious. So this is the first preset pack. Oh, there we go, I spoke too soon. Can you even, am I even giving this enough time to change? I'm not, so, whoops. I was, I was like clicking through it, like why isn't it going? Boop boop. Um, so this uh, would definitely work on this shot. The shot was under having the, where I was going with this, is like having this exposure push on photos where I'm shooting under is great. If you're an artist who shoots digital and you're underexposing a little bit, this pack's gonna comp, this all of their packs are gonna compensate for you there, which I think is a nice thing if you do that. However, I don't really think it should be any in the presets. Um, but yeah, okay, cool. Um, I don't know if I did this one on studio, so I'm gonna rattle through it here. Yeah, I didn't. This is actually where I started. Um, let's take these. I haven't gone over. What? I don't know why this keeps happening. This photo, I'm so confused. I'm missing something, that's for sure. Okay. And I'm sure somebody who watches this is gonna realize whatever I'm doing. So right off the bat, for someone with fair skin, this just needs to come down. I'm also now questioning everything and feeling like, ooh, uh-oh. Hmm. Mm. Are these presets actually designed? I don't know. If you can read my mind, we might be thinking the same thing, but I'm not going to say it. Um, anywho. Um, they need to come down, you know? When that happens, though, this pack starts to get pretty on point with what their work kind of looks like. I might be talking out of my butt a little bit here, but um, that shadow depth is there, so. That's an interesting thing to look at. Okay, so we're gonna just take these, I'm gonna take the exposure down on all of them as I do this. Hold on. I really need to sit up, I'm so bad. Um, this kind of stuff, I, I just, I see other people that'll color imagery to just suddenly be like yellow like this. I hate it whenever I do it. I don't know hoo -hoo how people do that and I enjoy it in other people's work, not my own. This preset on her is not it. I'm just going to pretend like I need to deal with that. Okay, so this is this. I think this is actually their newest preset pack by the way. I would probably, if we're gonna, like, uh, if I'm being honest with myself, the black and white is probably gonna be my favorite, um, but if I'm pretending that that doesn't exist, this and the Renaissance are definitely better than the 90s for portraiture. The 90s is really fun for street stuff. Okay. I'm gonna, wait, I'm gonna finish rattling through this. And then we'll go on to the last pack. I should probably come up with a better workflow of how to do this, but here I am reviewing someone else's color choices live. So 
Bye bye. Okay, here we go. Dime for the last one. Now I'm really wishing that I would have kept the other packs just because I will say that I could tell the difference ish from the first to the second. Now that I'm on Utopia, so color pack number three of like the, we're living in the land of the shadows lifted blue vibes. Um, it just feels eerily similar. Um, I actually so far like this one the most as a set. So if you're going to buy one in its color, f number one, I'm going to just say this right now, scrolling through this, on this photo of Kaya anyway, this is the first set. Well, like when I look at these, yes, it looks like there's preset on these photos, let's be honest. But um, her skin tone's not doing anything weird in any of these yet. Let's check everybody else out though. I hope that I didn't like speak too soon. And honestly, this is kind of funny. This, not that I, I definitely just got these, but this almost lives in the space of how I remember kind of coloring these photos. So cool. Okay, that's kind of funny. I that makes me a lot like I'm into that a little bit. Um, but yeah, see, like this worked here. I don't know if it's gonna work in this land of studio. Um. Yeah, so this one is the best one. If you're looking for one to get, this is it. Like even this. Like I'd probably, you know, take some of the cool tone out of this a little bit because that's just not my look. But if you're into this stuff, like this is for you. Um, so this is definitely their best one, I think. And I say that because so far, even with somebody who's got really fair skin, um, I should have, I, I, I like quickly pulled these images together. I didn't really do a good job of selecting um, tonal range within skin tone for these photos. I need to do that better next time because I would be really curious to see, you know, different complexions, different textures. And I think those things matter to everyone, right? Like all of these, first off, they're all women and they all have really relatively, I don't want to say relatively, they all have great skin. And I didn't really select folks with a good range and I should have done better there. Um, but anyway, within these, they, you know, we've got some surrealness happening with the shifts in color, but at least like the skin tone still feels nice. Like I forget what pack it was where I got to the end and I was like, what is happening with the green and the shadows here? So that's really cool. I think that if you're somebody who doesn't know a lot about color and like maybe doesn't even know enough about curves to know where to, you know, remix, this would be the pack by Kai. I hope I'm not butchering that name. I'm really sorry if I am to buy. Cause see, look at this, ding, 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 ding. And I have not looked at these prior to right now. So these are like my first reactions, fully, truly. So yeah, Utopia is winning for me. And I'll also say that I think that Utopia is the most in line with their stuff too. I'm just going to get through these really quick. Got a good red and blue moment, orange and blue, whatever. Yeah, see, like, even this is fun in the like low exposure scene here. All right, so that is that. 
my big takeaway on this one would be if you're somebody who wants to, if you're a preset person and you want to buy something from them, whoop, I would get, which one am I in right now? Oh, and then I think Utopia is the newest one. So Utopia wins. Utopia is the newest one. I would get Utopia and I would get Noir. And if you're just going for color, I wouldn't even waste your time. Is this one that I had before this, I think? I wouldn't even waste your time with this one or the 90s, unless you're like hardcore big street boy or girl or whomever. Big street girl, gal, person. And you should just stop. Stop while you're ahead and you're already wrong. Um, Renaissance is okay. This is also a preset pack. I love how I'm just like thinking in my head. There's an internal monologue going on hardcore. All of their presets are definitely for somebody who wants, you know, the the blue and orange, teal and orange vibes going on, and you really like the like lifted shadows and the curves. Um, I feel like outside of Utopia, you're going to be spending a lot of time um, having to adjust those presets to do what you want them to do, which is why if you're somebody who's like, I like their work and I want something that's as plug and play as possible, I would go with this one. I'm going to move this. So that they're a little bit more side by side here. I wish that I had a good way to like rate these on a scale of like one to ten, and I don't, and I probably won't because everyone's creative preference is different, and I don't think that you know anything is right or wrong with photography or art or in almost in general thinking makes it so so if you're into this color space that's cool um there's nothing wrong with that and so where i'm going with this it's like you know let's talk about this this one really does start to hit more of this look you know, um, did I play with that like that? I don't think I did though. Let's see. And then one thing that's a little bit tricky for me still is that I, I'm not going, I didn't white balance my stuff, so I'm going to guess, as like a side note, they're definitely doing some white balancing that I'm not doing. I'm kind of just like run, running with, well I guess I did white balance these, but I'm kind of running for the most part with things as they were shot. So I definitely encourage doing that with this. But I just feel like this stuff is what's going to live as closely there's I could be making this up though if you disagree let me know I'm, I'm happy to hear and talk about it but you know what I mean like this to the I mean not that these are the same kinds of photos here but like this and this have the same kind of feeling and probably better off comparing these to these street photos though you know but I'm not having to, you know, theoretically, you know what I mean? I would be, if I was, you know, being forced to create a set using these um, presets, I would be doing some adjusting on them for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, these are the most like their work, I think. So buy the new set. One second, y'all.
I don't know if you can hear it, but my cat started screaming. I don't know what's wrong with them. They're really upset right now. So I'm going to get off. I'm not going to rate these because that's not why I'm doing this. I'm doing this to show you which ones are going to be the most plug and play out of the ones that they're selling. If you are a preset person. And I would say Utopia and Noir are your safe bet if you want to make your life easier and you want your work to look like this. I hope that helps somebody. And I hope you guys have a good night. Bye.